Welcome to Vendetta Sports Media. My name is James Herrick, and today I am here with Dave Film Study on UFC heavyweight Tai Tuivasa. And we're doing this in anticipation of his UFC 293 co main event against Alexander Volkov. And you may be curious as to why we're not doing the champion Israel Adesanya in the main event, but we already have an Israel Adesanya film study done and on the channel. So I can link that in the description if you're really interested in Adesanya um, heading into his main event. Uh, but for now, we're focusing on Tai Tuivasa. And if you haven't watched one of these film studies before, basically what I do is I watch film and then I bring you two strengths and two weaknesses from a fighter's game. And I show you clips that illustrate what I'm talking about. And then at the end, I craft a game plan for a fighter and against a fighter, and that is what we're doing today for Tai Tuivasa. The first strength that we're going to look at in Tuivasa's skill set is his ability to land his power punches. Tuivasa is really well known for being a power puncher that likes to brawl and can land big knockout shots. And he deserves that reputation because he does like to swing and he puts guys down when he lands. But I want to look at some of the technique and strategy that goes into how he's able to land those big power shots because it isn't all luck. And I don't want to make this seem like Tuivasa is some mastermind technician because that isn't really true either, but I still think it's important to look at how he's able to land these big shots. And the three things that we're going to look at today is his ability to make reads, the way that he throws in the direction that guys circle, and his ability to counterpunch. So those are the three things that we're gonna look at in the film that kind of explains how he's able to land all these big, powerful knockout shots. We're gonna start with a really nice adjustment from Tuivasa, and in this clip, he's gonna throw his big right hand, and Gan is gonna do two things. He leans back and blocks with the hammer block, and he throws his right hand. A couple minutes later, Ty throws a three punch combination with his big right hand being the third punch. This time, instead of looping it, he throws it straight because the straight punch is the weakness to the hammer block, and it results in a big knockdown. Moving on, when we look at how Ty gets guys to circle into punches, one of the important things to note is that he has a big right hand, so guys are going to constantly move away from it. Now, this isn't really complicated, but Ty is going to punish guys who do that by using his big left hook and getting them moving in to his left hand. Tui Vasa can also orchestrate that movement towards his left hand. In this clip, he shows Gan a big feint of his right hand, but he never throws that right hand, and when Gan circles away from it, instead, Tui Vasa is throwing the left hand and it lands. The last way that Ty lands big shots is by using counter strikes. And in this example, Augusto Sakai is going to throw a 1-2. But Tuivasa has a really fast check left hook counter. And that is what he lands here. And he lands it hard on the temple and hurts Sakai. Against Greg Hardy, Ty did a great job of exposing the inexperience and mistakes of Hardy. And in this clip, we can see Hardy actually land a really nice shot that hurts Ty. But he gets way too over aggressive, overzealous, jumps into Tuivasa, and all Tuivasa has to do is stick him with this big left hook. Once again, Tuivasa is hurt, and Gan is throwing all of his defense out the window as he looks to finish Tuivasa. But Tuivasa still has that counter left hook that he can land. The second strength that we're going to look at in Tai Tuivasa's game is his clinch striking. Tuivasa has a really underrated clinch game, and he lands a lot of powerful shots from that position. And this is really overshadowed by the big power punches that we just talked about, but he is more than capable of fighting with guys in clinch positions. And personally, I absolutely love this out of a heavyweight because a lot of heavyweights look to push guys to the fence and they look to stall out minutes. That doesn't really work against Tai Tuivasa because he is really offensive in clinch positions. So when he lands clinch shots, it dissuades guys from entering the clinch. In turn, he can use all that striking that we just looked at. And he's also really good with his back up against the fence, right? A lot of guys can really only throw clinch strikes when they have their opponents back to the fence. 
Tuivasa can land shots with his back to the fence or his opponent's back to the fence. So he's also versatile in that position. So I think there's a lot to really like about Tuivasa's clinch game from a skill standpoint and it really helps him especially in a heavyweight division that really focuses on clinch work and clinch fighting we're going to start with examples where ty has his opponents backed up and in this first example augusto sakai is not working to control ty's right arm so that allows ty to punish him by throwing a right hand to the body and a big elbow over the top that lands this is a good example of some clinch misdirection. And in this example, Tui Vasa is going to get a right underhook that usually signals grappling. Instead of grappling, he slips that arm back out and brings the elbow over the top, and Derek Lewis probably wasn't expecting it. Tui Vasa also remains active when he's backed up to the cage. And here, we're going to see him use his hand to push Lewis's head back, and then he's going to transition that hand into an elbow. That lands because Lewis's head snaps forward when Ty switches to the elbow. We're going to see a similar concept here against Sakai. He's going to push the head back with the forearm, but this time he comes from the other side with a hook. And that also gives him enough space to throw a follow-up shot as well. Let's swing things over to weaknesses. And the first weakness that we're going to talk about is Tuivasa's defense against body shots. Just to be honest about it, Tuivasa does not defend the body well, right? If you attack him to the body, he is going to struggle. This often comes in the form of teeps and just standard kicks to the body. When you kick him in the body, he is not very good at defending it. A lot of guys are able to land those shots, whether it be the teep on the front of the stomach, whether it be the body kick to the side of the stomach and the liver. He's just not very good at defending those shots. He's not good at getting his hands down to block those. And because he's not super tall, he often has to sit in guys' kicking range. So he's forced to be in kind of in a, in a position where he's threatened by those shots and then when he gets hit with those shots he doesn't eat them well right you can see body shots affecting Tuivasa in fights so he's not good at defending them and he's not good at eating them so that's a very bad bad combination and then from that since he gets hurt to the body he can all often overcompensate in defending body shots that leads to getting hit in the head because you're so focused on defending the body guys go well i'm just going to hit you in the head now since you're defending the body it's not that hard of a concept but we're going to look at the body shots and tuivasa's deficiencies in defending them and watch how that leads to him dropping his hands and being hit in the head so we're going to see a nice little progression and we're going to see him getting hit with shots struggling to defend them then we're going to look at some of the bad reactions he has and then we're going to go into him giving up shots to the head because he's defending the body. So we're going to have a nice little progression in that issue um, in, in this part of the video. And you're going to see how this kind of accumulates and how the volume of body shots can lead to very, very bad outcomes for Tuivasa. This is a compilation of Thai defending shots to the body. And he's getting hit with a lot of teeps and he's getting hit with a lot of traditional body kicks. And what I want to point out is the volume of shots that Gan lands. So we aren't going to go too in depth, but I want you just to see how many shots to the body Gan is landing. And I want you to see as we get deeper into this compilation, Tuivasa begins to react more and more, and he looks even more hurt as we get deeper into this compilation. Let's look at what all this big body work leads to. And I want to swing it over to Ty's fight with Derek Lewis. And I want you to watch how Lewis throws this head kick and how Ty blocks it. And in this freeze frame, we can see that Ty is using the hammer block with his right arm to block his temple and his chin. And then the other arm is coming across to partially block it and help take some steam off that kick. Now, let's compare that to the Gan fight where Gan cleanly landed his head kick. And when we look at the freeze frame, we can see the difference in how Ty blocks. That right hand is not up by the temple and it's not guarding the chin. Instead, it's coming down to defend that body kick while the opposite arm is also coming down to help block. This is all because Gano was able to find success landing his body shots and hurting Ty to the body. And the last weakness in Tuivasa's game that we're going to look at is that he gets way too wild. And I kind of alluded to this earlier where Tuivasa has a reputation of a guy that likes to swing and swing heavy. And a lot of guys will kind of engage in that type of fight with him. Some will have success, some will have failures. But 
in any regard, Tuivasa is more than willing to swing with guys. And one of the problems with that he is that he often gets way, way too aggressive. Like, Tuivasa will throw shots at 150%, just winging hooks from his hip, and he's just looking to absolutely just brutalize guys with the shots. But they're so telegraphed that they don't land. And he throws them so hard that he throws himself into bad positions. He gets himself off-centered, and he puts himself in a position to be hit with counters. So that is not good if you're going to swing yourself out of positions and get yourself in a position to get hit. So in this section, we're looking at examples where Ty just simply throws way too hard and swings himself into bad spots, leading to him getting hit with strikes. Let's start with this sequence against Surreal Gan, where Ty is aggressively hunting a finish, and we see him swing big, and we see him throw a big left hand that misses. That leaves him in this position. And we see him really bent over and offline. This is a terrible position to be in in a fight. And Gan perfectly responds by throwing two big kicks to the exposed body of Tuivasa. Against Pavlovich, Ty was hurt so bad that he just started to swing. And when he started to swing, he threw this big right hand. And he threw this so hard, I'm not even sure that Pavlovich countered. I think Ty actually just threw so hard that he fell down. That allows Pavlovich just to track him down and throw even more shots on the inside. Lastly, Tuivasa throws two big shots against Gan, and neither is really set up. This allows Gan to use his movement just to step outside of those punches, and when he has that outside advantage, as Tuivasa turns back into him, Gan just meets his turn with a quick right hook. That big shot leads to the finishing sequence. Now it is time to craft some game plans, and we're going to start with some pro Tuivasa game plans and a game plan for him to win a fight. And the first thing that I think is important to know in a pro Tuivasa game plan is that I'd like to see him be a little bit more educated, right? We've seen the examples where Tuivasa has the capability to land solid shots when he's setting them up and being smart. At times, he leans too much into the flurries and he leans too much into the brawling. And I'd like to see him look to dictate those flurries a little bit more. And what I mean by that is there's times where those flurries feel forced. In the surreal gown fight, it felt like he was forced into a flurry. You could see the same in the Sergei Pavlovich fight. I much prefer when he entered the flurry against Augusto Sakai when he had Sakai a little hurt. This allowed him to close the door on that fight. So I would like to see him pick the moments a little bit smarter in when he should be throwing down and going wild. And I think that will lead to more success. Then um, when, when we're talking about fighting in a more educated style, uh, the counter striking should play into that. I feel like Tuivasa's counter striking is underutilized. I think he is a very, very solid counter striker. And I think he has some really, really quick counter hooks. I'd like to see him use that a little bit more wait for guys to enter the pocket, and then punish them when they do. He only needs one, so he has the luxury of being patient. You can't be too patient, but you can afford to be patient when it only takes you one shot to, to land a knockout. So I'd like to see some more uh, focus on counter-striking. The same can be said for his clinch work. And Tuivasa has done a lot of really good work in the clinch. In the Derek Lewis fight, he found a lot of success from the clinch. Same with the Augusto Sakai fight. But I think there are times where that should be implemented more often because it is a pretty safe position for him. Now, you do want to be smart. You don't want to go into the clinch a bunch of times if you're fighting a really good grappler. That's when you keep your 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 separation. But when he is fighting a guy that's also a really good striker, I think he can find some success in the clinch. And I'd like to see him increase his utilization of that and then lastly, from a striking standpoint, I want to see leg kicks on the outside and I want to see him backing guys up with feints. So I kind of paired these together because Tuivasa has a really good leg kick and he feints uh, his leg kicks well. He has good hip feints on the kicks. So I would like to see him land leg kicks and kind of damage movement. But most importantly, 
get guys backed up. And if he starts landing his leg kick, he can then feint his leg kick to back guys up. I think there are a lot of ways for Ty to back guys up to the fence. He can use his big right hand as a feint to back guys up as well. I'd like to see him slowly feint guys to, um, to have them backed up and have their back to the octagon. And the reason for this is because it provides Tuivasa a lot more opportunities to land his big shots because it is harder for a guy to avoid those shots when you're taking away uh, one of his excerpts. And what I mean by that is when your back is up against the fence, you can't move backwards. You can only move left or right. So when that exit is gone, it makes it easier for Tuivasa to land his big shots. And we saw some examples where he's catching guys that are moving off the fence. So this is an area where Ty does good work. So I'd like to see him use those leg kicks and feint the leg kick, feint the big right hand, and, and get guys backed up with those feints before he throws. So those uh, would be my kind of ideal um, aspects of his game that I really would want to focus on if I were creating a game plan for Tui Vasa. Now, to craft a game plan against Tui Vasa, uh, it should start with the grappling. And we have not talked about grappling once today, which is kind of rare because I usually try to implement that in either a strength or a weakness. But when it comes to Tai Tui Vasa, there isn't much on the strength side for the grappling, and there's a lot more on the weakness side. And in all honesty, Weakness, a weakness in his skill set that I almost, I almost used was his takedown defense. Ultimately, decided away from it um, because I wanted to look a little bit more at his striking since there was just a lot more a tape of him on the feet. But when you attempt to take him down, you can do it. Derek Lewis landed a couple of solid takedowns against Tuivasa, and Derek Lewis in all fairness to him as an underrated wrestler doesn't really get the credit that he deserves in that aspect of his game. Still, you're getting taken down twice by Derek Lewis. Not a good look. Sergey Spivak had a lot of uh, good work on the ground in, in both landing the takedowns, and then he landed a submission uh, from the top as well. So Spivak did a lot of really good work on the ground against Tui Vasa. I know that was a long time ago, but um, that was one of the few times we've seen him, seen him really tested against a solid grappler. So... If you're a grappler, you got to look to take Tui Vasa down. He's not good at defending, at least from the last time we saw him grapple. He's not good at defending against the grappling, and you're taking his power shots away. If you can put Tui Vasa on his back, the threat of the knockout is gone. And that is something that if you're fighting Tui Vasa, you got to be happy about it. The threat of the knockout is gone. The danger is way down. So putting him on his back is the smartest way to approach this, and it is a pretty... Um, applicable game plan, right? This isn't something that you really have to break uh, break the bank to do. It isn't something that you need to be an All-American wrestler to do, um, but you should be looking to do that if you have um, some solid wrestling skills. You don't even have to be that picky, right? You There's quite a few ways to get Tuivasa to the ground, whether it be the traditional wrestling takedowns take or whether it be your clinch throws. Either way, you can take them down. Now, um, as far as striking goes, if you are a striker, I think you should start with the body shots, right? I mean, we looked at length about how he struggles defending the body and how that can open up shots to the head. So it'd be a little silly of me to sit here now and avoid the body or not talk about body shots. So just start to the body, you know, keep them at range, stay far away from them and just chip at them with body shots. If you're chipping away at his stomach with body shots, you are doing really good work. If you spend the whole first round chipping away at his body with kicks, you are doing good work. So that is something that should be a massive, massive staple in anyone's game plan that is looking to strike with Tuivasa. And then some other small things. You want to keep your back off the fence. I won't go too in detail here because we just talked about it in the pro Tuivasa game plan. But if you're backed up to the fence, it's simply easier for him to hit you, and you cannot afford that. So you have to do a really good job of not getting backed up. And using the teep can be a good. It can be one of the ways that you can accomplish that. So use the teep, um, good circular movement on the outside, and be proactive in it. Right? Don't wait until you're backed up to go. Oh, I got to get my back off the fence. You don't want your back there at all. So be proactive in controlling the octagon, and then. Um, just, you know, the last thing I'll say is be aware of the power shot from minute one until the fight is over. 
you can get hit with a power shot. And I don't care how hurt he seems, he can hit you with a power shot that knocks you out. So you have to stay aware and you cannot lose the concentration. Um, so even if you've got him hurt, you have to stay diligent in remembering that this guy has the ability to put your lights out at any minute. And when you forget about that, that is when he lands the shot that knocks you out. So be diligent of that. Thank you for watching this film study on Tai Tuivasa. I hope you either learn something about fighting or I hope you learn something about Tai Tuivasa's skill set. Either way, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, we have a bunch of other film studies on the channel. There are quite a few available at this point. And like I said in the introduction, I will link the Israel Adesanya film study um, in, in the description because he is fighting this weekend. And that was actually the first one I ever did. Um, so that was a couple fights ago. But the goal here is to keep this information pertinent across a fighter's whole career and have it not be fight specific. So I think a lot of that is still applicable today. Um, so check that out um, on vendettasportsmedia.com and in the description. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you next time.